and welcome to all of you. You're watching Tech24, France 24's tech show. Are data scientists becoming more important than athletes? In this edition, we tell you how the motorsports industry is turning to big data to get hundreds of variables right on the racetracks. And as telework is becoming the new normal in the wake of COVID-19, we'll test a full body screen that will give you a more realistic interaction with your colleagues who are off-site. Now imagine being able to see inside a mummy without ever removing its bandages. Scientists in the UK have done just that using micro CT scans to create 3D models of animal mummies without ever unwrapping them. Alison Sargent has the story. Inside these bandages, an Egyptian cobra that died over 2,000 years ago. This X-ray uncovers the skeleton of a bird, now believed to be a Eurasian kestrel. And here, the skull of what was thought to be a cat and turned out to be a less than five-month-old kitten. Revelations that come thanks to micro cat scanning. Using the equipment we have within our imaging facility at the College of Engineering at Swansea University, we were able to see inside the animal mummies for the first time in three dimensions. And that's really, really helpful in trying to tease apart those different um, aspects like the species, the age and how it died. Unlike medical CAT scans, where the X-ray revolves around the object, in micro CAT scans, the object does the revolving. The resulting 3D images have a resolution that's 100 times greater and can be closely analyzed in virtual reality and printed into 3D models. But this work could show a, a workflow for future investigation, potentially revealing lots of new insight into uh, the animal lives at the time, but also of the people of the time, how they lived and worked, um, and the religious practices also. Bone fractures on the snake suggest it was cracked like a whip against the ground or a wall, while the kitten was likely strangled. Ritual killings that were common for the some 70 million animals that were mummified in ancient Egypt, as company for their deceased owners, as food supply for the afterlife, or as offerings to the gods. The use of data for enhancing performance is nowhere more than in motorsports. Whether it's designing cars to achieve aerodynamic gains or extracting the maximum performance, or even rectifying errors for the next races, big data is perhaps one of the most important tools for engineers. So what kind of data does a team competing at the highest level rely on? Well, to know more, I'm joined by Boris Burmes, who heads the race and test operations of the German team Baikolis Racing, which is a regular participant in the famous Le Mans 24 Hours race. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Hello, good morning. So what kind of data does a team like Baikolis use during a typical racing weekend? Uh, we have equipped our LMP1 car with a data recording system, which is split it in uh, two systems. One is a recording system of all the sensors for long-time analyse analyzers, and we have a telemetry system, which is an online tool connected the car with a garage where sitting all the engineers. And we are at any time linked with the car and can see all the driver inputs and all the car behave and the engine behave, the gearbox behave and all the functionality of the racing car. So how do you generate this data and how does it help in improving the performance of both the car and the driver? The racing car is equipped uh, with a lot of sensors. So we are running almost 100 sensors on the racing car. Uh, split it in several areas for the chassis, for the aerodynamics, for the engine, for the gearbox, for temperatures, for pressures, etc. So all these sensor inputs are collected in a data recording system, which is recording the data. These data then will be transmit uh, to uh, analyzing software and can be used to improve the setup of the car on track to improve the functionality of gearbox, of engine, and to make the car at best condition uh, for the current uh, track situation. Further, all these data recorded, we're gonna uh, use them at the factory for developments, uh, being connected with software tools as 
calculation software and simulation software. With these tools, uh, we are also further developing the car for new parts and for updates. Now, Boris, how much of a disruption has big data been uh, for the world of motorsports? Yeah, since the 80s, uh, electronics becomes more important in uh, motorsport. And uh, basically, it starts with optimizing engines, uh, optimizing the engine performance, the drivability of cars, and also the fuel consumption, which became an important topic. Uh, later, uh, this becomes more input to the chassis side as well. And uh, in these days, we are recording a lot of data from all of the car, which is not anymore only the engine or the chassis. It includes also uh, stuff like gearboxes. The LMP1 hybrid car have another big step in electronics as there is an electrical motor, uh, which has to be controlled by special software, which has safety features, which have to be controlled and which have to be monitored. Boris Burmes, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. And we're now going to turn to our in-house expert, Dan and Jake Hattelkar. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. So the use of big data is actually universal across sports discipline. Uh, we're going to talk more about, at this time, football or soccer in American English. But uh, it's actually a challenge uh, that started a, a couple of months ago and involved uh, the, the Paris Saint-Germain here in France. It's a very famous team of, uh, of the, the Paris' team, actually. Well, yes, it was a hackathon that, in fact, took place last year and it brought together uh, 3,000 participants at the Parc de France, which is the home stadium of Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, Paris Saint-Germain, of course, is not the only team that is using data analytics to improve their performance. Um, it's, as you mentioned, across, um, across almost the all the top teams. Right. Uh, now, what, how data analytics helps team is that it, first of all, helps to, uh, for example, anticipate if a player is likely to suffer an injury, it can also help in uh, selection of a player. So if you want to pick a player in the new season, that so data analytics can be a useful tool. And there are uh, certain algorithms that uh, predict the most likely actions that players are, or certain players are, uh, or certain players will take in certain situations. So this is very helpful when it comes to training. Now, can you give us perhaps an overview of, of the most data-intensive uh, uh, disciplines? Well, one of the most uh, data-intensive disciplines is Formula One because it's a complex machinery. There are so many components involved. So you have uh, the telemetry data that tells you the speed of the car, the RPM, the revolutions per minute of the engine, uh, the tire pressure, the driver biometrics, and all this has to be considered or and may, maybe there are uh, slight adjustments uh, to be made. For example, during a pit stop, you can tweak the, uh, the front wing in order to achieve more aerodynamic gains. So it's, it's these small things that play a big part when it comes to the outcome of the race. So yes, Formula 1 is one. Then uh, there are some interesting applications at uh, the Tour de France, uh, the annual cycling race uh, that, that takes place here in France. Um, now, for starting last year, they have they are using a machine learning system that basically analyzes the movement in the peloton. So it's able to predict the key, potentially key mom moments, such as right. perhaps a crash in the peloton or a split in the peloton or the change uh, changes in the uh, leaderboard. Thank you, Dan. We're going to move on now to test twenty four. In the last few months, we've witnessed a plethora of video conferencing applications either launched afresh or undergoing upgrades. And now a French startup, La Vitre, has developed a new solution that stands out from the rest in. Well, yes, it's right next to me. It's a big screen. And there's a person at the other end. You cannot see him now. But uh, I'm going to knock on the screen. And here is Hello. Thierry Bouca. He is currently in Nantes in Western France. Hello Thierry, yeah, welcome. Thanks. thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So as you can see, this is a giant screen, so it gives you a realistic effect, as if the person you are talking to is physically standing next to you. Now, there are multiple features on the screen. First of all is that uh, Thierry is currently sharing his uh, mobile screen, which I can, I, I can see on my screen. 
So yes. I can zoom in, zoom out. I can also write on the screen and and Theory is, is, it. And Thierry Thierry is also seeing same. what you're yeah, doing yeah, right Thierry now. Can, exactly. yeah, whatever I write, Theory can see it. I can share documents. And there's a very interesting feature. Um, I can talk in one of the 30 languages that are that this uh, screen is able to translate in real time. So I'm going to speak in Hindi. And let's see how it does. Namaskar, Theory. Kaise aap? Hello. Uh, how are you? Aap se bhot khushi hui milke. और आपका ये जो प्रोडक्ट है बहुत ही अच्छा है आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू थैंक यू सो एज यू कैन सी इट्स इट्स वेरी फास्ट एंड थियोरी जस्ट वन क्वेश्चन एज जूलिया मेंशन दैट देयर आर देयर आर सो मेनी एप्लीकेशंस वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंसिंग एप्लीकेशंस हाउ डिड यू गेट दिस आईडिया ऑफ हैविंग दिस जायंट स्क्रीन एंड एडिंग दिस रियलिस्टिक टच टू इट Our team is splitted in different uh, cities in France, and uh, we are, we were looking for a way to keep a, uh, a human contact between those teams. And so we started with a always on uh, video conference tool, and uh, it turns into this product uh, with a big screen, where the big screen keeps uh, the human contact and the impression to have something, someone uh, real uh, in front of you. Wonderful. Now, uh, love it. This startup it develops the software. but it has a partnership with samsung and in fact this is the samsung screen which is uh, equipped with a camera and there's a computer uh, behind which does all this processing thank you very much that was a, an incredible test 24 thank you for that dan and jay uh, it brings us to the end of this week's edition of tech 24 we hope you enjoyed it and you can watch it again on our website france24.com see you soon